welcome to my channel and welcome to the first video from Lead Code. This one is called To Some. Let's jump into it and tackle it out of our way. But before we do, I just want to remind you something. I am not here to give you the answer to the problem. I am here to give you the way I think about these problems. And I guess the reason is very strong. When I teach data science and AI to students, one of the major problems is how to think about the problem rather than where to find the answer to the problem. That's my job here, to teach you how to think. So let's jump into this one. All right, problem number one is called to sum. I will tell you what the user will give us. The user will give us a list, so 2, 7, 11, and 15, like the example, and they will give us a target, which is nine in this case. We need to find two numbers in this list that if we add them together, it will equal the target. Well, in this problem, it's very easy because two plus seven equals nine. All I need to say is this number and this number equals nine, and that's the answer. But I will tell you how I'm gonna formulate this. I just made it easy, but the question is just a bit different to what I said, but the essence is the same. For this question, I should be returning zero and one. Then you might ask, hey, Amir, we need to return two and seven. Why are you returning zero and one? Well, in Python, we start counting from zero, right? We say zero, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. We don't start from one. Number two here sits at the cup number zero. And number seven here sits in the cup number one. That's why we return zero and one. Or in another example, for example, three, two, and four, the target is six. What do I need to add to get into six? Well, two and four. Two sits in cup one because we start counting from zero. Zero, one, and two. I need to return one and two, if that makes sense. If it doesn't, I'll just bring up my Jupyter Lab and I will run you through. Bear with me. Okay, I have set my Jupyter Lab in black so that you can easily see when I'm coding and I'm not in lead code. This is my Jupyter Lab, it's separate. If I say I've got a list, and that list equals two, three, and four. I'm trying to show you an example. If I wanna get this number right, all I need to do is to go my list and take index zero, and that will give me number two. If I take index one, you will see that it will give me number three because this one is sitting at index number zero, this one is sitting at index number one, and this one is sitting at index number two. So if I take index number two, I'll take number four. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. What lead code is asking me, let me jump back there, but first I will clean up here. What lead code is asking me is to complete this class and the function in that class so that when the user gives me this input and this target, I will print out the accurate result. And then you might ask, hey, I mean, how do we do it? Well, that's what I'm here for. But before I do that, let me run you through this first line of code that I am going to be completing from. So the function we are creating is called to sum. That's the name of the function, right? This self, you can ignore it for now and I will get back to it later in a probably separate video. I just don't wanna bother you with this. You can ignore it. It's not gonna stop you from doing, but do not delete it, okay? You will be given or the user gives you a list of integers, this is what it says, it's gonna be a list of integers called nums, as you saw in the example. Also, the user will give you something called the target, which is also an integer or a number, that's good. So this is the definition of the function, that's what we know. But what do we get out of the function? What is the response of the function? That is defined by this sign. It means that when you are actually going to use this function, what you will get out of it is also a list of integers, as you saw here. So we will receive a list and we will receive an integer and the outcome of that is also going to be a list of integers. So that's the meaning of that line. But my job is to start writing here. What I will do, I will copy this example to my Jupyter Lab because I want to teach you how to solve this. Let me just make this smaller and bring this to the front. Extend my Jupyter Lab 
and I will paste those examples here. All right, let's start with this very first example, which is two, seven, 11, and 15, and a target is nine. So we need to find two numbers that equal nine, which is very easy. You've got two and seven right there. It should be very easy. If I wanna show you how this problem is trying to challenge us is by indices. We need to know that this two is sitting at index zero, seven is sitting at index one, 11 is sitting at index two and such and such. Let me take you step by step. If I have a container that keeps a record of not only the numbers, but their indices, then my life is very much easier. All I need to do is to put the numbers and the indices into one container because this doesn't exist. I just wrote it for you. So if I have something like a number container, if I call it a number container, I will create an empty dictionary. And you might ask, hey, why are we creating a dictionary? Well, I have a reason for it. I will show it to you. This empty dictionary, all I need to do is to write a for loop. I will write a for loop that captures the index and the number. And where do I get them? Well, I will use an enumerate function. I've got a really good video on the enumerate function. The link is up the top right, go watch it. But I will use the enumerate function to run over num. And if I print index and number, you will see that, wow, it gives me a lot of the things that I need. It tells me index zero is two. Index one is seven, index two is 11 and such and such. Now, what I wanna do in here, let me just delete this, you understand this now. What I wanna do is to use my number container and every time put the number in the right index or assign the right index to the right number. Let me just run it and I will show you what it gives me. What it gives me down here, if I show you, you will see that the number container says number two is, as, is at index zero, number seven is at index one, number 11 is at index two and such and such. If I did something more interesting while I was doing this, I could print at each iteration, you would see that two is zero. Two is zero, seven is one. 2 is 0, 7 is 1, and 11 is 2. So you can see that now I am creating a really good address book that tells me who is who in the zoo. That's what I've done. So let me clean the screen for you a bit. I don't really need this print anymore. Let's make it less cluttered. Now you know that I have something that captures the indices and the numbers. What I want to do here is just open some space and create a new variable called complement. Complement in English means something that completes another thing. For example, two and seven complement each other in becoming nine if you add them. So what is my target and what is the number in the loop? If I print the complement and the number, you will see that the complement in the first time is seven because the number is two, because seven and two equals nine, then it's two and seven and such and such. So I don't wanna really go into that deep uh, discussion. Let me clean that. And now I've got the complement, I've got an address book, which I really like. All I need to do right now is to write an if statement. I wanna say, hey, after you find the complement, search in my address book. If you have it in your address book, give me the index and I will use it. So I wanna say, hey, if the complement this time round exists in your number container, what I want you to do is something very interesting. I want you to show me the number container for that complement. Show me where is the address of the complement. Is it at index zero? Is it at index one? Where is that? And then also show me the index for this number. I will run you through why I did this. Let me show it to you. It says, hey, zero and one. And look at that. The answer was zero and one. So we have, we have fixed this problem. But let me show you what happens. It takes zero and two in this example takes zero and two here and says, okay, target is nine, 
Number is two. Complement will be seven. Is seven inside the number container? It is not there in the beginning. It says, no, it's not, it's not there. It says, okay, if it's not there, add it to my address book. It says, okay, number two lives in index zero. Goes back up to this for loop. It says, okay, let's take index one and number seven. All good. Target is still nine, number is seven this time, and complement will be two. Is two existent in the number container? No, it's not. It will be added. Okay, let's add it. Then does the same with 11 and two, 15 and three, until it finds that zero and one are the ones that actually work for us. So if I were to print this and say, print, yes, we found it, you would see that after running through multiple rounds of index and number, it says, oh yes, after this one, I found the answer. So that is pretty, pretty cool. So what I will do, I will just get rid of those print functions. We don't need a print function because I have to change this into a bit of an um, objective programming. What I will do here, I will change this from print to return because we are writing a function. We are not here to write a print function. All I will do now is to copy all of this and come here. And let's just try to make it work as smooth as possible. Let me move that that way and hit enter there. I'll drop these here. This for loop has to go indented to the front. So I've got my number container. I've got my for loop. I've got my return and I need one last return. So return an empty list. And I think that should be it. So, so if you're a beginner, all I'm asking you is to care about this bit for now. What I will do now, I will hit run to see if it runs. All these test results should be okay. Otherwise it's wrong. I can see that case one is accepted. Case two is accepted. Case three is accepted. All I need to do now is to press submit and hopefully all the solutions are working as expected and says, yep, 63 out of 63 test cases passed and we have successfully tackled this problem with a lot of ease. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends.